Yo, what up guys, Bo here. So I wanna start off the new year with a what's on my iPhone video. I love watching these videos because I think it's a good way to see what other people use on their phones and a great way to discover new apps that you may not know about. I know I found quite a few really cool apps from watching these videos. I'm currently rocking an iPhone 10 in white with 256 gigs. Now, 256 for most people is an overkill, but I shoot a lot of 4K videos and believe it or not, the iPhone 10 is a pretty suitable B cam. So personally for me, having the extra storage definitely helps. I've been using this as my primary phone since launch day in November, and it's probably one of the best phones that I've used so far. I don't have a ton of apps on my phone, and there are still quite a few apps that haven't been optimized for the iPhone 10 screen, but for the most part, many of the daily apps that I do use have already been optimized. So here we go. First, I just want to talk about how I organize my home screens. I don't have a lot of apps installed, and I tend to put my most used apps on the first page. I also don't like filling an entire page uh, just because of the cluttered look, uh, so I tend to leave the last row blank. I use notes a lot, like a lot. Anytime I want to jot down anything from an idea for a video or a grocery shopping list, everything goes into notes. It's not great as far as organizing everything, but it just syncs with iCloud so well, and I'm able to access from my other Mac computers. I came across this camera app, Hallet, just a couple of months ago, and this is really good for those of you that want more manual control over your camera. You can do everything from changing your white balance to ISO to even racking focus. Seriously, it's a really good alternative to the native camera app. Speaking of the native camera app, I still use it just because of portrait mode, 4K, and slow-mo. Apple has come a long way at improving their maps, but Google Maps still reigns supreme. I have built-in car nav, but if I'm gonna go to a place I've never been to before, I'm gonna check with Google Maps first for general route and traffic. 95% its time of arrival is always spot on. Dark Sky is a new weather app that I started using a couple months ago as well. What I like is that it's a light on graphics so you can focus on what matters, which is weather forecast. It'll provide temperature and forecast every other hour as well as what the weather will be like for the next seven days in simple black and white graphics. There's also a pretty cool function that you can see the entire earth and what's going on in each country for both precipitation and temperature. I don't really use video calls, but since all my family is on iOS, FaceTime is the go-to app for me. I'll admit that I don't post a lot on social media and I promise to do a lot better. But as far as Facebook, I consume posts more than anything else. Um, I've been posting more on Instagram uh, since I started this channel and I'll definitely be upping my game. As for Twitter, I don't use the default app, but instead I use Tweetbot. I think it has one of the best interface ever, and I love dark mode. And of course, the way all tweets show up chronologically. It's identical to the Mac OS version, which I also have. When I do product shots, I sometimes use Visco if I want to go for that film look. I just used a free version, but if you offer their subscription, you'll definitely get more filters. Uh, their filters have that very distinctive look, so it may not be for everyone. I have a Sonos system in different rooms, so this is the best way to control everything from syncing speakers from all the rooms to setting them as independent. Best of all, there are so many music sources that you can use, and the sound quality is really second to none. Only downside is that they are not cheap, but if you factor everything that it offers, it's actually not too bad. The number of accounts that I have racked up over the years is insane. That plus the fact that my job has multiple programs that require me to change my password every 30 days, and they cannot be similar to the last 10 passwords used. One password is a lifesaver. It's exactly what the name suggests. It stores all your login credentials and will always ask you to re-enter your password with your fingerprint or face scan depending on the type of phone that you're using as soon as your phone auto locks. The only password you ever have to remember is the one to get into the app. Of course, one of my favorite apps is YouTube. I watch YouTube for everything from tutorials, reviews, to entertainment. The next one, YouTube Studio, is really for content creators to stay up to date with how their channel is doing and various stats, and it's also a pretty good way for me to reply to any recent comments. Flickster is really a movie guy sort of app that tells you what's currently played in theaters, what their ratings are. Also, if there are movies that you're waiting to come out on Blu-ray or on demand, this app will tell you exactly the date it comes out to buy or rent. Gas Buddy is exactly what you think it is. It gives you the price of most all gas stations in whichever area you're in. 
I would say it's about 98% accurate. There were only a couple of times where I pulled into a gas station and the price was different than what was listed on the app. Slick Deals is an app I check every morning for deals on pretty much anything from regular household items to tech to video games. It has it all. I use the Apple News app to get all my news since you can customize the categories you're interested in from politics to photography to video games to videography. Plex is a really awesome video streaming app. If you've ripped a lot of movies and store them in your home, computer, or server, then Plex will allow you to stream to any iOS, computer, Apple TV, or just any device that you can install a client app on. You can also enable remote viewing, so if you're on the other side of the world, you can stream videos that you store at home. That's pretty dope. I use Verizon Files and uh, their files app allows me to see what's on my DVR to what's currently on demand to even remote control the multiple setup boxes I have since, you know, I have kids that like to hide the TV remotes so I can't change the channel or turn the TV off. Apple TV is also great for when the real remote just mysteriously disappears and someone will cry that they want to watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I use Google Docs to jot down all my YouTube ideas and how I want to present them and, and it syncs extremely well. Trillo is an organization app that I haven't quite gotten started yet but found it after watching a what's on my phone video. I have LifeX bulbs installed in the studio and this is the only way to control them so I don't think there are as many options compared to Philips Hue but it's definitely good enough for me. On the third and last page page are my apps within folders and they tend to be more utility based more than anything else. So I just quickly go through the folders and type of apps um, that I use in them. So instead of naming the folders, I decided to make it a bit more interesting and use emojis instead. Uh, so thank you, iJustine, for the tip. First folder is just really a folder that I throw all of the default Apple apps that I don't use like TV, health, iTunes store. Second is just what I store for couriers. If I'm waiting for a tracking number, if I'm trying to find out where my packages are, I primarily use either UPS or FedEx. Third one is basically what I use for my uh, Apple wallet, Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts. For those of you that don't know me, I love Dunkin Donuts coffee. This folder is where I store all my shopping apps like Apple Store, Amazon, eBay, Target, b and It's probably the apps that I use um, the most and they definitely have a way to drain my wallet. This is all my finances, my bank account, uh, I pay my bills, my AT&T, PayPal, things like that. So nothing too interesting. This is the travel apps that I store, uh, another weather app, Compass, uh, flight stats is pretty cool. If you wanna check where your flights are in the world, it'll actually show up on the map. And of course, lastly, we have the Apple Maps. Uh, like I said before, it's gotten better, but I still prefer to use Google Maps. This is my social app, really just LinkedIn, Google Voice that I haven't used in a number of years. Um, Facebook Messenger and Snapchat, which I don't use at all. This is kind of like a media app, really um, HBO Go. I have HBO at home that I watch, so I don't really use it on my phone. Uh, O-Tunes is a radio app where if I want to listen to some of my favorite radio shows and I don't have access to a radio anywhere, um, I just use this on my phone. Play Memories is a pretty good app that um, since I use a Sony Alpha camera, all the pictures that I take, I can download them wirelessly through this app and I can do, and I can post to Facebook, I can post to various social media. So that's everything. If there are any specific apps you'd like more details on, definitely hit me up on social media. What are some of your favorite apps? Drop them in the comments below. Also, if you have any ideas for my upcoming videos, definitely let me know what you would like to see. If you like this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, just subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be the first one to know when I drop a new video. This is Bo. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.